uh, it's an absolute pleasure and honor to connect with most of you. Uh, I understand that you are from multiple parts of uh, India. Uh, let's quickly get started on what I want to cover. And uh, there's going to be less of PPT. Of course, PPT is fairly long. But I'm trying to show, I'll be trying to show you as much as possible demos so that you're able to understand how these tools and technologies can deploy. A few of these you have already been deploying in your offices. A few of these you will probably get idea, okay, this is how I can, you know, sort of uh, deploy it. And probably, you know, a few of these, you may also get a perspective in terms of, okay, this is how it exactly appears when it comes to a technology. So with that as a background, let's quickly get started. A quick introduction about me. I'm a chartered, I'm a Narsimha Nilangon, a practicing chartered accountant. Uh, by qualification, I'm a, uh, you know, by qualification and practice, I have moved into technology. Uh, and I have had a huge interest and passion in technology, and that's where I've been able to do a lot of things. And uh, on that uh, quick note, let me, um, uh, you know, get started with the presentation. Uh, this is the book which I've recently authored. It's called Digitizing CA Practice. It takes you through the entire journey of how a CA firm can be, you know, become uh, digital ready. But unfortunately, this is available as of now only with the Karnataka State uh, Chartered Accountants Association and it's as available as a physical copy. The ebook is not available. Probably I'm coming soon with uh, an ebook with a slightly different uh, concept called as digitizing digitization of professional practice with a slightly different perspective covering remote working and other things as well. Uh, a general disclaimer, uh, I will have uh, a few presentations and topics which I'm covering, uh, which would, uh, you know, sort of um, 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 have to put it in a very simple language. I'm using a lot of third party tools over here. It's not that I endorse any of those tools, but it's just from a, my practitioner's perspective, how these tools can actually be very helpful. Okay. So with that as a background, let me quickly get started. Um, a, a general uh, couple of, uh, uh, you know, request if I could uh, quickly tell you. Uh, it would be helpful if you could disable the video sharing just to ensure that you know the bandwidth of the uh, session is saved because everything gets uh, redirected to through Zoom. So that is only one thing which I would probably request you. Um, I am still seeing some messages and uh, some managed participants are coming up. Uh, if I could please request the organizers to please take care of it because it keeps appearing as a pop-up. Uh, it's a little disturbing because the flow gets uh, sort of uh, diluted. It'll be very helpful if you are uh, if uh, the organizers can you know sort of take care of that. Definitely, sir. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I think if that is the case, I think we are good to go. Let's quickly move ahead. So the agenda which I'm going to bring in is uh, I want to take you through what is the state of affairs, uh, typically from industries to CA office. Uh, what is that roadmap for te my technology adoption in a typical CA office? Uh, what is my digital strategy and gearing up for the future? Uh, may I request uh, all of them to be on mute just to ensure that there is no confusion. Wonderful. I think uh, we are good that way. Okay, so uh, the last three and four, depending upon time, I will take it because I wanted to focus mostly on the tools. So probably, you know, I will emphasize more on the tools, how to use it. The digital strategy and gearing up for future, probably I will see how best we can to sort of cover it. So let's quickly see a few challenges which our profession is facing in the last few days. Uh, most of the data is somewhere, uh, you know, let's see what's happening around the world. We know this COVID-19 has created a serious question on various practicing professional firms uh, or the entire globe at large saying that, you know, this is what is the situation. How do I sort of handle it? Uh, on the other end, we have our profession where, you know, we predominantly were a on-premise profession. When I say on-premise profession, my practice was predominantly based out of my uh, location, wherever I was. And of course, I used to send my clients to a different place. So with these as a channel or these as a situation, how do I take this up and how do I sort of, you know, strategize on this? So that's basically what we're going to look into. And I'll spend a few minutes on a few problem areas. A, there is a good amount of dependency on trainees and staff. We need to sort of, you know, uh, to a large extent, we are dependent on them. Second, there is a difficulty in tackling the daily tasks. 
and when i use the word daily tra- uh, tasks i'm basically referring to you know you might have assigned some work to your uh, uh, audit team and unfortunately or fortunately they have not updated you or uh, you know various things like that sometimes you feel that you know they have completed the work you just go ahead and give them the next work but little do we realize that you know the previous work is still pending uh, process standardization is going to take some time it is not standardized yet there are a lot of manual processes which we are still following in our offices maybe that is some area which we have to look into a uh, limited automation i would not say no automation probably this is a, a, a from an earlier slide which i picked up i would say a limited amount of automation we have a huge pile of books and that is for various reasons that is unavoidable and the limited value addition we have been delivering to our clients in terms of you know because the compliance has become so much that we are definitely doing value addition but if i had more free time i would have probably done much more and the, thanks to this covid situation uh, we are coming up with a few more new challenges and those are you know for instance all the data is typically in our office you know that's one uh, major issue uh, unable to travel because of various restrictions and i understand that certain states have their own severe restrictions uh, you know they want to um, contain the spread uh, then i'm also not able to you know sort of communicate with my office staff most of my communication is on whatsapp and you know sort of communicating is becoming a challenge uh, next is i am not able to meet my clients so is there something which i can do for that that is one more challenge and also i am not able to track the task and time typically in terms of my efficiency etc and i am not having sufficient software licenses to operate so these are the buckets or you know challenges which we are as, as of now facing and the one or one simple question is how do i sort of access the data so this is basically what the setup or how we are in place so now the real challenge or the real question now is how do we sort of you know solve this problem okay how do we sort of you know address this and for that my dear friends what i'm going to do is you know i'll sort of take you through what are the various thought processes which we as a ca firm will have to think about uh, so what is the road map for technology adoption in a ca office that is the core crux which i'm going to speak about and how do i look into what are the various steps which i have to speak about so anything when we have to start implementing the first and foremost i would say my dear friends is we need to put in three fundamental things into this and those three things are first which is your mindset how do i get my mind to work on this particular thing how do i develop a strategy who do i want to be and whom do i want to deliver a service to how do i build the business model around this so that's the three most important things which have to work from a mindset perspective next is from a skill set perspective what are the skills which i or my staff require and how do i make sure i obtain these how do i get a comfort on these how do i attract people with the right skill sets and last is tool set do i have the required tool set to leverage my strategy am i having sufficient resources for that and that's basically on the tool set which i have to probably tell you so with this set of things our approach should be totally based upon the these three thought processes the mindset the skill set and the tool set the mindset is to tweak to uh, tweak our mind or to probably get started that whatever i do i can probably do with the help of technology the skill set is i need to get myself trained and of course the third is the tool set which i'm going to specifically focus on today's session first and a very interesting question today which you know appears before all of us is why should i use technology why can't i stick to the conventional way today frankly speaking only companies which are using technology are those companies which have actually been able to survive all other companies are not able to survive for various reasons only those who are powered by technology thanks to you know the setup they are actually been able to work on the other end we are seeing companies which are you know the traditional way of as a traditional way of systems they are not able to do anything because they are wholly dependent on the traditional model of working so let's see what exactly technology offers for us first it will help you typically from a ca practice it can help you efficiently track and schedule work thanks to the hundreds of apps which are available it can maintain records and also connect with the firm's client database it can connect with all of these people you know connect with the database and connect with the system and things like that 
next next thing which can can do is sharing the data with a uh, loads and loads of clients you know sharing the information with the required audience and participants improvisation of a communication process that's another important thing and i also show how this has been done storing retrieving data efficiently and effectively with adequate disaster recovery mechanism uh, with uh, these unfortunate covid situation we have seen that disaster recovery is very critical and it can enhance the way you present your work and it's going to be an absolute savior in terms of how you present your work the marketing of the firm and their value proposition of course you can probably focus on that and you can ensure that you know the time pressure is taken care of or you're able to manage the time pressure so these are few basic things that you know why technology is necessary for our office and on that note let me quickly also tell you that we need to catch up with the trend what is the trend the trend is that you know from the traditional method we are all getting digital you talk about any industry today my dear friends all of them are saying that they are getting digitized this is now going to become the key message or the key factor which is going to figure out who is the next generation of business which is going to survive and in fact that's what this covid 19 says you know many of them have said that covid 19 has clearly separated the men from the boys those who have been in the edge of technology or who have had an upper hand are able to do things much better compared to those who are resistant to adopt technology i know very senior professionals who have now se seriously started adopting technology and they said if not now probably i don't know when it could be next so that is the way this is actually shaking shaping up and you never know how these things could probably in future give a huge amount of returns so on that note let me probably take to what are the tools which are essential for any professional firm and i will try as much as possible to bucket the tools under these categories this is in addition to the income tax roc and the other software which you are currently using i repeat this is in addition to those existing software so because the moment we say software and digitization you think that if i have a income tax filing software if i have a gst filing software if i have a roc filing software my work is over that is just an entry point there is a whole lot of things which you have to probably evaluate so what are these tools which are necessary to sort of evaluate first a very important thing is a practice management solution and when i use the word practice management solution i am referring to a system or a setup which can track the various works which we do and at the same time i repeat at the same time be on top of the work to say how much is the work completed how much is the work which i have work in progress and how much is probably due for billing etc and that way a practice management software is very very beneficial for the following it can track track your task get record time typically your article staff how much time you have spent or your team how much time they have spent attendance is again a crucial aspect and of course not to forget the billing component so a practice management software amongst the various other things generally tries to you know focus on this second is a document management system a document management system probably you can relate it or understand it to a file management or an archive management system in simple language in a very very uh simple language a document management system in a layman's perspective is a version of electronic books so the earlier method of book keeping what you used to do you used to start physical files and structure but as a document management system we are simply saying that you know have basic structure what is essential and put them all of them into digitized form so what it can do it can archive archive is very old set of things which you don't want probably it will automatically push it off it can also help you in terms of backup in a backup of what the systems are and very important it can decide to whom you want to give access and to whom you don't want to give access that's a very important function from a document management and then comes a set of tools which can help you in terms of communication internal communication and sort of client communication these are basic tools which definitely have to help you in terms of a communication perspective and they have a whole lot of things which can be done next bucket is collaboration and productivity this is basically going one level above sharing the files on real time spreadsheets word processing etc these are something which is necessary branding and marketing this is one other thing which is absolutely essential 
uh, because today we all know that you know we have to brand ourselves as a professional and marketing to the extent permitted under the ICA rules. A few basic things, you know, it could be a website, email, your campaign. Campaigns is basically a software which you use for sending emails. Now, many of us just send bulk emails, which is good. Put everybody to two or CC or BCC. But how do we know that how many of our clients read that? How do we know that how many of our clients have actually see, got a visibility of that? How many of them have further shared it, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? That is possible if you are using a campaign-based software. Then, of course, is webinar. Thanks to you know technology that we are being able to you know sort of connect through this a software for doing a webinar. Uh, it could be an app like Zoom or others. We are going to cover that. And remote working tools. This is something which has become an uh, important considering today's situation. And it is expected that this will go on for some more time. Maybe even if there's a relaxation, it will not be a full-fledged relaxation. There will be hesitation for people to travel. There'll be hesitation for people to go even to a client place for various reasons. And I think that is the new normal which we are talking about. That you all have understood, you know, we all have understood that home is the best place for each of us. And it's time and again proving that, you know, even for working, probably home is the best place. So screen sharing, video calling, web meetings are essential. And domain specific issues. You know, these domain specific are accounting automation, audit automation, compliance automation. These are additional things which can actually help you out. So at a high level, these are the tools which are there and which is necessary. And let me quickly spend a few minutes to take you through each of this in a broad perspective. One very important question which keeps come occurring to various people is, how should I deploy technology? Should I use a technology which is in my own office or should I use a version which is there on the internet? And that is where I came up with this new addition. Uh, for those of you who have heard me earlier, etc., I have definitely added some more things into it. Let me see how best I'm able to keep you as well engaged. So I have something called as an on-premise versus cloud-based uh, setup. And I've extracted this thing from my book where I've spoken on uh, various technologies. The first thing I'm speaking is on deployment. What is deployment? How do you use that technology is basically deployment. Under the traditional method, which is basically we are following the first, the second column is nothing but what we are following in our offices or, or what we are seeing in our respective premises. What you see on the right hand side is basically a uh, next version, which is a cloud based version, which is nothing but online version. Okay. So on premise is normally within my own enterprises IT setup, which is the within the firm's setup. But what you see on the right hand side, cloud is basically hosted on somebody else's website. It could be Amazon, it could be Google, or for that matter, it could be even a website such as quickbooks.com or zohobooks.com, you know, hosting applications like that. Second, the cost in case of an on-premise is relatively higher. Why? We have to incur hardware cost, software cost, licensing cost, network, internet network cost, internet cost, so many things are there. I mean, in, when I say uh, uh, internet, I'm majorly referring to with networking rather. Internet anyways, we have to incur. On the cloud computing side, we need to pay for the resources that we only use. And that's a very positive thing which you have to keep in mind. So we pay only for the resources which we actually use. And therefore, if I'm using one license, I pay only for that one license and I don't pay beyond that. On the control side, the firm shall retain all possible data if it is an on-premise, whereas if it's a cloud-based, it is generally hosted on the server of somebody else, but it is normally encrypted. And how do we know that? You can always question or ask your cloud service provider. They would be more than happy to give you the information. Then comes security. Firms that are extra sensitive over the security and privacy, then probably traditional premises may be good, but cloud, Again, there are some security concerns, with, but it's a mixed bag. People definitely have some amount of technology to safeguard it. Uh, as far as compliance is concerned, wherever there is an extra compliance, as per the privacy law in India, we still don't have an official, uh, fully documented version of privacy law. Currently, we have only the Information Technology Act. Uh, wherever there is a requirement that you need to have it on premise only, then you should probably stay, have it in-house. Otherwise, you can do a due diligence on your cloud service provider and probably go to it. Uh, flexibility, there should be, uh, you know, lesser flexibility. VPN is necessary in case of on-premise, a typical scenario what we are facing. If I have to access anything in my office, I require some additional software uh, from my home. Whereas in cloud, it really doesn't matter. In your office also, you're using internet. In your home also, you're using internet to access what is there on the cloud. 
uh, backup and recovery is basically uh, the focus of backup and recovery is on the uh, firm, uh, typically in terms of what the firm is going to do. Whereas on the cloud computing, it enables the service provider. Oh, uh, you know, most of it is on the service provider, what he will have to do. And uh, as far as updation of software is concerned, it is manually done in case of traditional computing. Whereas in the cloud, it is typically driven by the system. You know, that's basically, you know, they take care of it. So these are few basic differences. Uh, both of them has its own advantages and disadvantages, which we have argued and spoken about. Uh, of course, cloud is much more cheaper, uh, more versatile. You can access it anywhere. And some people are even enabling you to have the access over mobile phone. You know, things are possible today. And in fact, I'll speak about how all of these are possible in a few minutes from now. So the first thing which I'm going to take you through is an office management solution so that you're able to get a perspective. And what can this office management solution do is what I'm going to take you through. So what is a typical process? You have a team which does the work. You have a client. And you have a task which you have to assign. And there is somebody else who has to review. That's a simple workflow. And on that connotation, you know, you also have to ensure that this task management software is able to efficiently allocate the work. It is able to automate the task which you're doing repeatedly. At the same time, client collaboration and time calendar planning is easily possible. So these are basic things which is possible. And perhaps your office management software should give a, you know, a dashboard like this. On the top, you find what is called the various tasks. Below you find various activities to do and right hand side you have some what are the latest or the recent activities which your software has come across or are the, your, uh, your firm has in life. So let's quickly try to show a demo on this, how this office management software can possibly be used. And if you can give me a minute, I'll quickly swap the screen and share that screen with you. And you are seeing a screen which says Ordeal Dashboard. is how the screen looks like. Uh, so I'm presuming uh, uh, it will take a minute for those of you who are connected or if you're watching it on YouTube, it may take a little longer because there's a live stream. Expect some amount of delay. So this is a simple dashboard. The moment you log in, this is how it appears. It gives you a perspective of, of course, there's a demo account just trying to show uh, one of the tools uh, which I happen to encounter. Uh, this is one of the things you know, from a dashboard perspective, you know, the various new tasks come here. What are the tasks you've completed? what are the tasks which are overdue very interesting what are the tasks which are closed so a simple overview in terms of what is the firm's situation and you can also get to know what is the employee wise situation so employee gets to know what is open tasks are and he knows whether to accept it not accept it etc in the left hand side what you see is a navigation pane which says that you know what are the various things which is possible over here in terms of dashboard clients various tasks which are there and of course you also have a setup where you can actually sort of, you know, update your timesheet and uh, you can update this time date in a structured manner. You can choose what is the date you want to apply or, you know, you just say press mark here and say that, you know, I'm sort of filling up my timesheet for today. So I click over here and the moment I click over here, I can choose which client I've worked on. And the moment I have chosen the client, I can choose the type of service I've worked on. And I can give, for instance, let us say GSTR 9C uh, task ID sometimes automatically comes. It can, I will also give you the time spent, which I spent eight hours and I can write, okay, reconciliation or, you know, 2A matching. You know, things like this, you can write it and you can submit it. And the moment it submit, it goes to your partner for a sort of a supervision. So that's one perspective of what we see over here in terms of a timesheet. Uh, you also have leave management over here. You will get a perspective of how many leaves are there. What is the situation? Then you have your DMS. VMS is nothing but document management system. Uh, the various files of your clients at one shot, you will be able to get it. For instance, you know, I can click one of these clients and I can see what all files are there based on every financial year. I can get a perspective. Uh, so that is also possible when it comes here. And of course, very important as I can also add clients and sort of, you know, review or collaborate. So all of these are possible to a setup such as this. Okay. So now that we've got some visibility into one of these tools, let's quickly jump the gun and see, you know, are there any such tools which are available? And for that, I will have to get back to my presentation to quickly give you a perspective. And 
if you see this screen on my presentation, there is an app called as Clockify. Clockify is an app which will help you to track. I mean, there's another app which will help you to track the time, the uh, time which you've spent, you know, sort of give a dashboard, give a project, give a report, who are the various teams, you know, various things like this, probably this app will help you out. But of course, it's a US based app may or may not be fully be able to meet to an Indian requirement. Uh, and of course, we have a few other apps which can probably help us out to track the tasks. You know, you find um, Procat is one other app, you know, which is developed by Winsor Infotech. Clockify, you have Cordial is one more interesting app, which I just showed you. Simplify Practice is one other app. Cordial and Simplify Practice have a tie up with our ICA for the you know, limited number of members, it is free. And beyond that, it is at a subsidized price. Papilio is one more app again, which is helping out in terms of task management. I'm sure there are hundreds of other apps, but these are few of the apps which I that has come to my notice specifically and I thought I'll share it with you. Uh, Trello is one general workflow management app. Uh, it has certain limitations because it is not designated or it is not made for a chart accounting firm. Likewise, Bittrex but otherwise it is possible. On the extreme left, you find something called Google Sheets. That is also a possible setup. Okay, so on that uh, note, I think I've covered practice management. Teams is something which I'll speak about a little more in detail. This also can be used for your collaboration. I'll quickly jump the gun, move to the next thing which I want to talk The second thing which I want to speak is on the communication piece of it. When I say communication, I want to say, how are how am I communicating with my team? How am I communicating with myself? colleagues. It could be how do I communicate even with my clients. So all of these become an important thing in typically with respect to you know, uh, what or how it is possible and what you're able to collaborate. So therefore, considering these things, you know, I have uh, sort of thought will make a mention, what are the tools which you can use uh, to communicate and on the left hand side, what you find is a few uh, places where there's necessary client meeting, training article staff, internal discussion, screen sharing. And what you see a little below is staff communication, internal discussion, tracking, etc. Uh, so few apps which can help you for video conferencing and you know face-to-face -face meeting. Zoom, I think um, most of us are aware that um, uh, it has so many, it has used extensively and we are also been using this particular app. In fact, many of them have today used Zoom so much that there's a new terminology which is coming up in the world, which is called a Zoom fatigue. You know, I've got tired of using Zoom, so therefore, you know, I want to go outside from it. <laughs> anyway, jokes apart. Next is uh, Cisco uh, WebEx, one more interesting tool, go to meetings. These are three popularly used uh, video conferencing app. Of course, my another uh, tool which we are using in our office is Zoho uh, Meetings, which is again reasonably quite powerful. Uh, each of them has their own cost and other considerations. If you're using Zoom, uh, you know, many of them are a little apprehensive on the security related things because various advisories were issued. Uh, I think they have fixed a good number of them and you know, there are some settings available where you can go and modify. And if you're able to make those settings safe, you are in a good position to you know, sort of use it. Below you find what is called a Slack flock. Of course, Microsoft Teams we spoke about and Zoho Click. Now these three apps, ignoring the teams, these three apps, what they do is, it is like a chat platform within your own office. We also popularly call it as IM, instant messaging platform. See, typically what happens within our office is, every now and then we have to communicate, collaborate, speak with them. At the same time, you need to share files, you need to sort of review the files, you need to email. What happens is if our mails are used only for internal office communication, when will we be able to communicate to the client? So therefore, these tools, what you see on the last line, help you to a large extent on how they can sort of, you know, optimize it. And under that Slack, Flock and Click are reasonably powerful. And one tool which we are using in our office and has good features is something called as Click, Zoho Click. Now what this can, of course, there's a screenshot uh, where you can do is on the left hand side, what you can see over here, I'll of course show you live of this a little later. Uh, you can have various conversations, you can have various channels, you can have various contacts, what you can see here. An interesting thing which I liked it a lot is something called as a bot. A bot is basically uh, sort of, you know, something which we can do in terms of uh, uh, um, a periodical reminder, or it is a basically a robot which can do something for you. 
and that's something which i really liked in this particular uh, software they also have a internal polling software in fact we used it recently uh, you know when do we want to have a weekly off or when do we want to have a monthly off or today's training agenda or this week's training agenda should be what or you know how should we uh, probably you know uh, manage the work this week do you want flexible hours does anybody want something else you know some sort of internal polls and discussions we were able to use this and it is pretty simple and effective after a training internal training was done we wanted to give the feedback instead of asking everybody the feedback we just created a poll over here and you know people were able to answer so these are simple things which the software offers and the reason why i say this is very good is you can also add a client to the conversation and you can have hundreds of conversations you can have hundreds of conversations or hundreds of channels where you can have internal external and everything is under your control so that's basically what a communication platform can do and next is on the collaboration and productivity now when i use uh, uh, collaboration and productivity we are referring to file sharing we are referring to systems which can act as a backup we are referring to systems which you know sort of large files can be stored typically in terms of what they are doing how it is being done etc and we can also see how what can be accessed over the web without even sort of downloading and that's possible through this collaboration uh, apps uh, three very popular apps amongst this is uh, two which we all of us are aware one is of course microsoft second is google or the g suite and third which is you know not very popular but still the few, few of the features are available for free is zoho zoho documents so these are few apps which are having these features and one very big question which many of us have as a professional is how do i you know decide between should i have to go to microsoft or should i have to go to google that's a big issue which many of them have and with all due respect unfortunately many professionals uh, i have it has come to our notice and you know generally it has also been heard that uh, there is not much of uh, you know what if i have to put it there is not much of uh, um, it, or rather not many people who have actually bought the licensed version of microsoft and it is actually a little uh, troubling uh, because it could be uh, mistake or it could be a trouble and i highly recommend that you don't do that please ensure that you have adequate license of microsoft not every person in your organization should have a microsoft license and assuming you don't have a microsoft license there are definitely alternative softwares which is available for instance there is something called as w wps office there is something called kings kenningston office or something so these are all free alternatives to microsoft you can probably consider but yes we cannot say no to this entire thing because it is necessary because we have to use it in our professional work so one big question which many of them have is should i use microsoft or should i go for google the fight between that microsoft and google is always there in terms of the solutions which we are going to look into and i thought i'll take you through this again a new addition which i've added into my slides and my presentation so for those of you watching it for a subsequent time this is something new uh, so office 365 versus g suite both of them have huge number of features and i thought i'll take you through even practically but first let's look into what are the differences first what is possible in a g suite you have various things for example content management you want to manage content or files so you use what is called as google sites it could be something website as well whereas this is for you know typically i'm talking only from document management perspective and content management in office 365 you have something called sites which is today called as sharepoint then you have document editing editing you we all know what we use we have google docs which is basically a whole suite of products uh, and google docs typically we refer to the word document then we have sheets which is nothing but excel spreadsheet and slides and slides is nothing but your uh, uh, powerpoint presentation whereas office 365 we have two things very important office online and office for desktop if you are using the office for desktop my dear friends you need to have a licensed version if you are using office online there are few features which are available even on the free version so you can probably consider using that next g suite versus office 365 in terms of again document and content management for document sharing there are few apps such as hangouts uh, probably i think that line is uh, missing apologies for that let me see if i can quickly uh, you know have that corrected uh, so one is basically for your content management and document management uh, for document sharing you have what is called hangouts 
Hangouts is basically a uh, simple calls and you know a chat sort of a window like how we saw for uh, our uh, internal office you can have that uh, like how I showed you Zoho click or uh, uh, you know a few other softwares office 365 is nothing but office 365 is be, okay just for your information office 365 has been renamed as microsoft 365 effective uh, uh, i think 22nd or 20th of april uh, i mean the features are more or less the same they just their branding and naming is a little different because it says here we say google suite so we know google word is being used so office 365 who knows what is the meaning of office so microsoft 365 they call it Anyways, so Skype for business is something which is quite interesting. Then you have Google groups, which you can create in G Suite. Whereas in Office 365, you can create Outlook and inside Outlook, you can create multiple groups. Uh, you can also create uh, Google sites for uh, files which are powered by Google Drive. Here we use the SharePoint. Again, if you are using OneDrive for business. Here you have Google Drive, there you have OneDrive. And then here we have Google Plus, which is a basically a social media platform in Office 365, you have Yammer. Again, these are not too very popular. Many of them don't use it, but still they are there. When it comes to document storage and synchronization, I think it is a repetition, but just the categorization is different. I'll not spend too much time there. Next is, you know, in terms of team collaboration, what can I use for collaborating with my teams? So one, we have Gmail, which is basically the Gmail tasks. You know, in Gmail itself, you can maintain tasks. I'm not sure how many of them are aware. Right inside, there's a small navigation window. You have something called as Google Keep, which is pretty a powerful tool of Google. It keeps a track of various things. Whereas in Office 365, you have Outlook tasks. You go to Outlook, create your various tasks, and you also have Planner. For note taking, G Suite does not have a dedicated app, but Google Keep also can be used for note taking. But in Office 365, you have something called as OneNote or you know, Outlook groups or Microsoft Teams, etc. And in fact, this Microsoft Teams is the latest edition which came from Microsoft into their suite and is having so much, it's bundled with so many solutions and softwares, you know, probably will come to that. Uh, next is in terms of communication, uh, we have Google Groups and Google Press here. I think we spoke about this. This Microsoft Teams is what I told you, it's a quietly, uh, you know, fairly powerful one. Then you have discussions and announcements for your Google Groups, Google Sites. Again, there you have real-time messaging. You have Hangouts. Here you have Skype. Of course, screen sharing, video calls, you can do Hangouts and Skype. Uh, so Zoom sort of a feature where 25 people can also chat at one point in time is coming up. Uh, or it probably, uh, it is released recently or updated by Google. And I think it's called Google Meetings. That is an additional uh, tool which is there, probably which is not covered over here. That's another add-on solution. Whereas Microsoft does not have a solution like that, but Teams is a very, very powerful solution which you can definitely go and explore. And yes, uh, not to forget, uh, if you're mobile cap compatible, you're looking at, yes, uh, these are all the mobile compatible apps which are available from Google. Uh, most of us know these apps because by default, uh, when we have bought our uh, mobile phone, these apps were preloaded. Whereas Office 365, not many of them are aware these are a whole lot of things which are available from Office 365. And they're pretty powerful, let me tell you, in terms of what they can do. Uh, many a times, uh, you know, if I'm not having my laptop, I have a, a one, a OneDrive configured and my data sits on OneDrive or let's say for that matter, Google Drive. From Google Drive or OneDrive, I'm able to share the file immediately. And I'm not sure again how many of them are aware. These softwares also have a limited days, limited time sharing option. Let's say you want to give the share option only for a few days for your clients. You can do that. You know, those things are possible. It will automatically on that particular time, it will revoke the access and nobody will, even though they have the link, they'll not be able to view it. So these are the basic security things which are available, which is there in the software. And, you know, probably I thought I'll take you through a practical, uh, you know, so that you get an idea how it is. Let me quickly jump into uh, G Suite. Um, So this is something which I think most of you are aware, you know, the typical Gmail looks like. This is the right inside what you see over here is what I'm referring to calendar, keep and tasks. This task is pretty powerful. You can write the list of tasks every day you want to do and it can help you in terms of collaborating. You can just have a list and you can also mark your colleagues over here if required and you know, things like that. Uh, and I'm sure most of you use this very powerful tool, which is your calendar, Google Calendar, uh, which is basically more in terms of, you know, your time and the schedule managing and et cetera. Uh, I normally have a busy week. So, you know, almost every day I have a webinar. So, yeah, so you'll find that there. Uh, 
the other thing which most of you are aware but i thought i will definitely make a mention is google drive uh please note i understand that the there are various types of people who are attending the webinar youngsters uh, millennials freshers who have jump, jumped into profession and we also have senior professionals so i'm trying to keep it a balance between all of them uh so what you find over here is you know the data which is there on my drive and the data which is there on my computer which is linked to google drive and a few folders which is also available who is shared and things like this various tasks are available over here and this is basically what i refer to as the three powerful things google docs which is quite similar to that of a microsoft word you know you have various things and the advantage of this is you know you, you need not bother too much in terms of you know how it has to be done and you know you can make a formatting you can do writing skills whatever is there and even if your staff is not having any system you can ask him to do it on a google spreadsheet and you know sort of things and you know send it across and then from there we have this uh, new which in terms of google sheets google sheets is a very powerful uh, uh, solution which is basically an excel equivalent and they have a lot of tools and add-ons which is something which i would expect uh, you know uh, I request you to explore uh, you know recently you can there are a whole lot of add-ons which you can click on and uh, those add-ons will help you do the work much more faster in fact you can write macros as well on this so these are quite a number of things which you can do you can just go and get add-ons and see what are the various types of add-ons which are available uh, it will just uh, appear or pop up in my in your screen in a minute uh, so this is basically what you can do you know in terms of diagram you can have you know Uh, various uh, solutions which are available and things like this you can have a quiz and you know google analytics you can use and a whole lot of things i think it's only we have not explored it i think we should probably consider trying it and you can also save it and create a folder where you want to have the data uh, that's about google spreadsheet and the last thing which i'll talk about is probably google slides which is basically a powerpoint equivalent so you just have you'll find it as quite similar to a powerpoint so which means and all of this is available with google and all that you require is just one login id or a gmail account okay so that's basically what the solution which is available and what is something which many of them are not aware is you can create folders and you can share these folders and the beauty is when i click on new there is something called more and this more has got interesting options which i would probably request you to go ahead and explore them Google form is my personal favorite it can you can use it for creating questions quiz templates and various things you can probably do that uh, many of us roll out checklists for our clients you can probably consider using google forms for that uh, when it comes to microsoft again they have pretty much the same set of things so let me see if i can quickly take you through microsoft onedrive um i have not logged in there it might take a minute for me just hang on for that Yes. so here you can see that you know what are the things which uh, office 365 can offer and this is what i told you office 365 has now become microsoft 365 uh, it gives you 1 terabyte of storage space and you know whole lot of things it also gives you what are the various devices i'm connected with and you know various uh, subscriptions which i have what is my billing uh, billing cycle what is my privacy and you know various information relating to that and it gives me very interesting thing the suite of products which i can have access to and you know i can just go click on any of these devices which i have manage these devices uh, you know sort of synchronize which is there these are few simple advantages which will actually give me a sort of a setup in terms of what i can do and many of them again are not aware what it can probably also do is you know let me go to onedrive.com here if i go Uh, of course it's not asking me to log in once again because i've already logged in but yeah uh, i am covering microsoft versus google in particular because i got requests from few of them saying that sir why don't you please cover this in detail so i thought i'll add something about it and you will find some folders and also you can have a personal vault which will have which will be more encrypted and you know sort of protected and things like that so this just to give a perspective of what is possible and you can sometimes even view these files and you know you can also open an excel sheet over here and see how best your excel sheet you can actually enter it within this setup itself 
So you need not even have an Excel sheet in your system. You can just create a blank workbook and you can just go ahead and do that. So I would sincerely suggest you to go explore these options because unless you explore and until you see, uh, it is not possible. And let me also talk about uh, the pricing of Microsoft, which many of them keep on asking. Uh, Microsoft Office 365 pricing. Uh, please keep in mind, we will have to use the business uh, pricing and not uh, the any other prior versions. Uh, even though you may have it for your personal uh, work, you may have to probably see the business uh, version. And uh, the business version, the pricing goes like this, which you see on the screen. 125 is only for a Microsoft account, which is basically at the rate your organization.com. 660, you get a Microsoft 365 with know a business premium this essentials only are covered so here you have web based version of office app whereas the desktop based version of office app is not permitted for this whereas here you get the permission so that is the difference between the 660 and 125 and for this 1320 is add on options in terms of advanced security device management i think that may not be necessary for us typically the 660 is sufficient per user per month please keep be careful alternatively what you can do is Probably only for a few users take up this license and for rest of them you can use this and ask them to you know sort of use the cloud version this is going to save a huge amount of cost and something which i recently came across or rather which microsoft which has become very popular recently after this havoc is microsoft teams uh, that is something which i thought i'll mention a minute you know to help out and these are very powerful collaboration tools particularly in microsoft teams you can also ask various uh, companies or your colleagues to you know sort of come uh, let me see how this works. So this is basically Microsoft Teams app. You can have various activities. You have a chat window on the left. You have various team members whom you can decide. Of course, we don't use Teams. I've just kept a trial version of it. You can also make calls to various people. Uh, files, recording, storage, you can have it on OneDrive. And various apps also can be stored or you know, sort of kept out here. You can try to see how you can synchronize so many of these apps. And the beauty is you can also open an Excel sheet here. You know, those are also possible things which is there. So you can just type Microsoft Excel and link it over here and see how best Excel can probably open in uh, your this thing. So these are basically features which is available. You have various navigation shortcuts and it, I think only one, you should probably go ahead and explore it. And on that note, let me quickly come back to the presentation, which is lying here. This is something which I thought I uh, perhaps I missed mentioning. Uh, this Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive, or for that matter, a Dropbox have a special feature. What you can do is you can click on this icon over here, whatever you see, you can install a folder. And what it can do is you can keep on saving the data in this folder and automatically it is sort of backed up and synchronized. So I know a few of our uh, you know, uh, colleagues or clients, what they do is they keep the data in this Google Drive. Both of them have two tally licenses. The tally path is linked to this Alfred uh, slash Google slash company folder. And you know I'm able to do some changes. And that folder is also shared with another person and he can in fact update it. I need not share the files at all. I'm able to use synchronization on real time. And there's also possible through Google Drive and Dropbox. Uh, people told me in OneDrive, it takes a little longer, but Google and Dropbox were seamless as far as tally is concerned. So a few other backup options. I think we've covered this. Walton is one more interesting app which you can consider for backing up your data onto your system. What it has a special advantage is it compresses the data into flat files and then uploads it. So therefore it is reasonably safe and it also is encrypted. Few other international uh, backup solutions which are there. Carbonate is something which is pretty good. Next is in terms of remote access. You have software such as you know remote screen, review of work, explain clarification. For all these purposes, you can use it. Uh, AnyDesk, I'm presuming most of you are using it in our offices. Remote desktop of Microsoft is also there. Team viewers is there. Just be a little cautious in terms of uh, the licensing of these softwares because some of the places you are not permitted to use this beyond a prescribed license. So that is something which you should be considering. And uh, one interesting thing which I recently came across is something uh, you know uh, which can bring all of this collaboration into one platform. So 
So in terms of essential tools for CA office is that we keep, we typically say today, your office is basically where your, where you are today. And that's basically what we have understood from this sort of a thing. So one solution which has com comprised all of them and put together as a bundle is something which I found in addition to Microsoft and G Suite. This is something called a Zoho remotely, which came up with two or three extra features, which I really liked it. Uh, first is it has features for communication in terms of meeting, collaboration, in terms of training. Then you have something in terms of work drive and what a work drive is basically like a Google drive. Then of course you have something called as projects and what projects is basically, you know, in terms of um, uh, uh, your task tracking, etc. cetera. Uh, sprints is agile projects, probably not very suitable for us as professionals. Assist is one very interesting and powerful tool which can remotely access somebody else's system sitting from here, quite similar to your any desk or um, um, your Microsoft remote desk, but it has one interesting feature which I'll explain it a little later. Then you have writer sheet and show, which is nothing but equivalent to you know your Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or Google Docs, your spreadsheet, and uh, what was called as your uh, slides. And reason why I thought I'll emphasize about this a little more in detail is because of this interesting message which you'll find on the screen that these remote working tools are basically free until 1st of July 2020. And this is basically bundled into one thing. And uh, they have given it for various people because at least then they thought they will be able to help out people uh, considering the various challenges. And uh, this is the stack of products which I told you. And I thought it makes sense for me to give you a live demo of this as well. So let me quickly jump and try to show you a live demo of uh, this particular tool. And that's called as Zoho Remotely. Give me a minute. All right, here it is. So this is Zoho remotely. It basically says your office is where you are. It has got a suite of products. This is what I tried to explain. I thought I'll take you quickly to, you know, this particular uh, software. So one advantage for this software, as I told you, it's free. Uh, again, what you can also do is, um, uh, you know, in sort of, uh, uh, it can help you in terms of an admin panel. It has what is called as a very powerful and an interesting admin panel. And what this admin panel can do, my dear friends, is it can decide to whom you have to give what sort of an access. So that is basically what an admin panel is. Let me quickly take navigate you through the admin panel and you can decide which colleague of yours have to access which application. For instance, we use click in our office and you know, a good number of people are required communication. So therefore we've kept it but as meetings. I've kept it only for a good number, 10 or 20 odd people, you know, whatever is required because I know these are the people who have to use it. And let's say the click, was the software which I thought I, you know, I gave you overview. Let me quickly take you through. Uh, so again, the advantage of these softwares are it has a desktop version, it has a mobile version, it has a web version. Okay, so you might be saying, sir, what is so unique in this event? Uh, you know, WhatsApp has that. Uh, the trouble with WhatsApp is WhatsApp should always be on in your mobile phone, only then WhatsApp works. Whereas this is basically works on internet. So it really doesn't matter even if you don't have internet connectivity on your phone, even if your phone is dead, you can still make a communication. So you have on the left hand side, what you can see is the list of team members. We have a regular requirement in terms of daily updating various tasks. You know, we have some uh, setup which uh, put in some sort of a control. Uh, we have conversations over here. And, you know, we also tried to have some, have some fun last week and we had some fancy risk competition, you know, some team members were dressed up in weird ways and you know we sort of uh, shared our screens we had a team lunch you know fancy things like this we keep doing and uh, this is what i uh, told you the last towards the extreme left what you can see is taz which is basically a bot which can help you to share files notes links for future reference and you also have what is called as your uh, pull bot pull bot will help you to do various polls and this can, you know, sort of, uh, you know, we were having some discussion, what we want to do. Do we want to play a game? Do we want to have office training and, you know, various things like that. Uh, this also has got a powerful feature, which is, you know, reminder. You can assign it to your friends or colleagues. For instance, I, I want to, you know, sort of assign it to my friends now. I can create a date and uh, today is the 30th. So I click, click on 30th 
and I say remind them at 7 10 p.m. I just say save and it actually sends them a reminder and I can also push them a reminder right away. So this, that's how powerful it is and everybody will get an alert into their mobile phone what is going on. And it also has calendar of events, today's events, everything could probably come up if you're using this. And this is basically one powerful software. You can also bring in your clients to use this. Second thing which I thought I'll spend a few minutes to you know, sort of uh, discuss over here is one other collaboration platform, just give me a minute, within uh, Zoho itself, and that's called as Zoho Meetings. Uh, this, I find it as a pretty simple, easy to, to uh, use platform. Uh, and um, as I told you, this could also be a substitute for Zoom meetings. They also have up to 25 people face to face. You can sort of see and you can set it up. And webinar is a slightly different. What we are now using is a Zoom meeting. Zo oh, sorry, Zoho, uh, Zoom meeting is what you're using now. Uh, Zoho also has a feature of a meeting as well as a webinar. What you can do is webinar is for training and uh, only one person can speak, others have to hear. Whereas in case of meetings, it is possible both the ways. And it also has a beautiful thing where you can record it. And you know what we did, uh, various activities which happened, we sort of recorded. And uh, tomorrow this became a repository for us. So we had some GST training in our office and tomorrow we have some company law training. So what we do is that the moment one of the colleagues speak about it, we record it. And that becomes a good source for your next time, whoever your employee joins in. You need not spend so much time in that and quickly, you know, ask him to go through it. He is better prepared. Uh, the third thing which I'll probably spend some time uh, is work drive. I think most of you are aware, so I'm not spending too much time on it. Projects is basically task management. Uh, I'll not go into that. Assist is something which I find it quite interesting. I'll probably spend a minute in this. While you're sipping your coffee, uh, I thought it would be... Uh, I thought I should also accompany you. So I just got some coffee from home and you know. Yes. So here you can write your customers or your beneficiaries email ID and click on start now. He will get a link. The moment he clicks that link and you know, you can sort of access the screen. This is quite simple. But what I find quite, quite powerful is this option called unattended access. What this unattended access can do is something which is quite marvelous. For example, I have the system eight, which is in our office and I want to connect to this. All that I have to do is, you know, click on this and please note, I am sitting elsewhere. Uh, the system is elsewhere. I am able to connect it within few seconds and there need not be any person over there to, you know, sort of say yes or no. So what we did was, you know, uh, we knew that whatever happens, some systems have to keep running. So one or two systems, we said, let it, not, let it keep on running in our office. And whenever we required, we sort of log in through this. And if you see here, this is, I am not required to enter anything further. I have to just log in and it looks as though my remote computer, I'm actually working. I have a whole lot of things which is lined up. I can sit and do, I can look into my tally and you know, various files. That is basically the powerful feature of what this can do. And I can also restart the system and I can still have the connectivity. Okay, I can also restart the system and still have the connectivity. Of course, if I shut down, it's over. So what we do is we regularly restart so that we still have the connectivity uh, so that the system is not, you know, uh, in terms of uh, it is not uh, dead or it doesn't get hung up. And one more important thing, which I thought I should also mention is it has a feature where you can decide who can have what access. So you can go to the settings and you can say that, you know, manage the technician. You can decide what access which technician should have or basically your colleague should have. The last thing which I thought I'll make a mention with Zoho Suite is a product called a Zoho Lens. So Zoho Lens, my dear friends, is a quite a powerful feature which can help you to sitting at your desktop, you can get access to somebody else's mobile phone's camera. You heard it right. I just have to, you know, start a session and, you know, somebody will have to uh, Copy this, of course, they'll have to go to download the app if they're using a mobile phone or if they have to go to this web portal. And the beauty is the moment they go here, I can view their camera, of course, with their permission. Now you might be thinking, sir, why is this necessary? The powerful feature of this is there are multiple ways you can use this. They have just designed the software, but I thought this can be used for a few interesting things. One is when you are doing a physical verification of inventory, you have to go to that particular place and sort of do a verification. But today, due to COVID situation, you are forced to take some sort of a remote confirmation. 
why don't you use this app ask the storekeeper over there to you know sort of scan through it and ask him to share his geographic location live so you know that he is actually in that particular location you also have the camera and you are actually collecting audit evidence i think it's time that we move into technology how best we can use because this covid 19 is no doubt it's created a lot of havoc a lot of damage impact to economy etc but the question is am i going to learn a lesson from it and how am i going to use technology better and that is where these apps like this will help you to a large extent okay so that's basically the admin suite and other things which i thought i'll make a mention i'll quickly jump into my presentation once again i'm sure you have questions uh, please note down those questions i will address them towards the end so this is what i told you there is one solution for everything the zoho remotely which i just showed it to you uh, next is uh, you know how do i bring in automation into my office i have uh, you know let's take a typical scenario uh, let's presume the lockdown is relaxed or you are back to normal by let's say in the next two or three weeks because we don't know how the announcements are going to be made if that is the case you will be you know pushed with so much amount of work you know we've been telling that you know all the april deadlines are pushed to june may deadlines also have pushed to june so june will be flooded with work i have to do accounting filing returns etc maybe they might extend they may not extend the it returns forget that and those of you who have read the finance act recently uh, you know i think um, the tax audit report has to be submitted much before than the filing the it return so there are a lot of compliances which we have to do of course you are best in those uh, laws and compliance but i'm here to talk more on technology how i can use it so here what we am going to do is I'm, i thought i'll take you through a uh, an experience or in terms of you know what you can do for ensuring quicker data entry in terms of your system so the first thing which i'm going to take you through is how do i do very quick data entry into tally considering the fact that i have a lot of line items in my bank statement again this is a solution which is provided by a third party and there are so many other solutions which are providing similar to this i thought i'll quickly take you through one such solution what well, as of now okay the next interesting question is okay before we look into the solution we should also know where the solution can be applied because it is not that you know i know i, I want to use the solution everywhere you should know what is the purpose so assuming i have let's say more than 100 or 200 stay line items in my bank statement or i have a lot of transactions which is coming in a structured form in terms of sales and purchases and i want to push them into my tally or accounting software imagine taking one fellow has to sit and key all the data entry huge amount of time it's going to take so instead what you should do is can i bring in a system where i'm reasonably organizing and this is where we can use of course i'm using tally as a basis because most of us use tally typically in our office and of course there are other th so solutions also available which i'll address that but yes tally is uh, something which most of us are using and that's why i thought i'll speak about how to automate that the so first thing which we have to do is try to keep a standardized chart of accounts and what is a chart of accounts nothing but list of ledgers where a ledger rolls up that is basically a chart of accounts okay so you might have share capital under that few items reserves and surplus few items you might have current liabilities few items non current liabilities few items that's basically the roll up structure popularly called as chart of accounts if you look into softwares like quickbooks zoho books or you know any of the cloud based software they have a different perspective tally has a different perspective and if you see in tally default only four to five ledgers are there not more than that so what we should do over here is can we use this chart of accounts for standardizing amongst all our clients that is the first tip which you can follow because generally if you see whatever accounts or whatever files i'm using 60 to 70% of the ledgers are going to be the same cgst sgst expense income etc the nomenclature and naming could be a little different but overall it generally tends to be the same so can i standardize them that's the first thing which you have to do second thing which you can do or which you should probably seriously consider is the fact that can i move or can i do something relating to you know uh, automation in terms of data entry and that's something which i'm going to show you now
So what I'm doing quickly over here is uh, I thought I'll create a company and uh, create this company as BCAS. And, uh, you know, sort of ignore all these items. Period of data entry, let's say I choose from 1418. Do I want to use tally fault password? Again, optional. User security control, I enable it. There's again, I personally consider as a huge benefit. I will tell you why a little later. And once I've done this, you know, I can also use tally audit features. Please keep in mind, tally audit feature will appear only if I use or enable this as yes. Okay. So once I've done this, this allow opening an education mode, I say no. And basically sort of, you know, put this ready. Now that I have this data, I quickly run into an Excel sheet. Let me open that Excel sheet for you. It might take a minute uh, for it to appear in your screen. All right, so here is the Excel screen. So here you find uh, Excel sheet, forget about what I've opened. This is a software which is which I'm using here. It's called E2 Tally Soft. It is basically a software which will help you to push data from Excel into Tally. There's a reverse software also available and that is called TCAT, which I'll probably, depending on time, I'll try to cover, but E2 Tally Soft is something which I thought I'll make a mention. So I've gone to the software and I've told the boss, Please download all the vouchers or you know basically give me all the formats available i've asked them to give me a template in terms of what is possible so i've asked them to give me a template for what is called as a masters and what is a master we all know that masters are ledger accounts uh, you know sub ledger accounts etc so you will find here masters and under that master it has various options which i can click accounting cost center and then, uh, you know, etc. So I just show sample data and I click open. Uh, in a minute, a new window appears, which I will just show it to you in a minute. You'll have to just give me some time, uh, which is nothing but this Excel sheet. So what you find in this particular Excel sheet is basically on the bottom, you will find uh, uh, multiple categories. One is called as groups. The other is called ledgers and the other is called voucher types. So ignore the statistics. I will quickly go through this group, ledgers and voucher types. Here, what I plan to do is, can I import all of them in Tally at one shot? So for that, I use the software again, and I go to the software and say, import Tally. What is it that I want to import? All my masters. So I click on masters, and it says that, what is it that you want to import? So I say, hey, you know what? Why don't you import my groups, ledgers, and voucher types. So the moment I say import all these three, it will take a minute or two, but it will push all this data. It will say which is the file where you want to import it, uh, you know, in terms of which is the account code or what is the name of the ledger. So the moment I say, okay, this sort of importing it, I'm not sure whether you're able to see the screen because I don't have the uh, access to share my screen, uh, but what happens is that it is imported a whole lot of these transactions. Okay, and what is the result? The result is this. If I go back to my tally, I can find the entire setup over here. Okay, I can find the entire setup over here. Uh, if I go to my display accounts ledger, or for that matter, go to accounts info, ledgers and display, I found all these ledgers are actually being recorded. Okay, so one shot, I was able to import a whole lot of ledgers, which was appearing and which was necessary. Uh, so just give me a minute. Uh, can I please request the organizer to give me access to, uh, access to share the entire screen? I think I'm able to share only one window at a time. Uh, if you could just check with uh, admin how that can be done because I'm not having the option over here. I think you have disabled it online. You can just figure that out. In the meanwhile, I'll go ahead and 
so that I'm not uh, wasting time on this. Okay, so while the admin figures out how that can be done, uh, let's quickly go to this particular uh, um, next set of exercise which I want to take you through. And that's basically, uh, let's say I want to import a bank statement. And let's say I have a simple bank statement. And uh, you know how a bank statement normally looks like. This is the bank statement. And in this bank statement, you find a whole lot of information over here. Uh, this is probably some bank, my name HDFC bank, the typical bank statement here. So now what I do is can I import this entire thing at one shot into tally and that's possible. And for that, what I do is first, I go to this last column called as remarks. And the remarks column, I add all the names of ledgers. And this ledger name has to be the name as per tally. See, because what happens is, assuming I'm talking about, you know, 61 odd entries, if I have to book it into my books, or, you know, 41 odd entries, sorry. 41 odd entries, if I have to pass the entry in my books, it takes a good amount of time for me to say, what is debit, what is credit, and a lot of things. So instead, can I push all these entries at one shot? Because I know one leg debit or credit has to be the bank. The other leg is basically what I'm looking at. So for that, I only have to ensure I fill up the remarks column. For want of any information, I've just copy pasted some re random remarks. But only thing you have to ensure is this remarks is nothing but whatever is there in your tally account. Even if there is a space spelling error, it will not accept it. So now what I do is I again go back to the software and the software is called e2tallysoft. And here you find an option called bank. I click on bank. The moment I click on bank, a window opens up and that window looks something like this. I tell to this software, hey, you know what? Please connect to Tally and tell me which are the bank accounts. So let's presume the bank account is Kendra Bank. And I now tell me where is the data actually starting? So I go back to my Excel sheet and I tell where the data is starting. So let's say from $21, just go there and click OK. If you see very carefully or closely, the date, check number, value date, and narration have been automatically filled, including the deposit and the withdrawal amount. What I now need to do is basically enter the corresponding amount. I just need to click on column. And the moment I choose column, I go click there and say remarks. Remarks is basically where the corresponding ledger is. I now convert the data. The moment data is converted, it converts into some format not relevant for me, but I click on view vouchers. This is where the beauty of this particular tool is you will find that entire data is converted into journal entries like this. So you'll find Canra Bank, you know, assuming because I had given accumulated depreciation there, all the journal entries in debit or credit form, of course, only single entry can convert, multiple entry you may have to fine tune it. Uh, so what you can do is you can always go click edit, add row, delete row and do it. And then you save this, you know, you sort of save this into the system. So let's presume I save it on the desktop, that is the favorite dumping ground for most of us. So I save this. That sheet opens up. Give me a minute. It opens up in a different spreadsheet. Let me quickly share that screen for you. So this is how the data looks like. It has a transaction ID automatically generated, date, ledger number, voucher number, our voucher number auto generated, debit, credit and narration as well. And narration is basically whatever was there in the bank statement. Now, all that you have to do, my dear friend, is pretty simple. Uh, you know, just go click on the software called E2T. Uh, go to the import to tally option, sorry, import to tally option. Click on vouchers. The moment you click on vouchers, you get a navigation window. And that navigation window is something like this. So it basically says accounting, cost center, what is it that you want to do? Just go ahead and import it. I just say I'll go ahead and import. It does a couple of, you know, a minute or two, it does some validation and it is actually importing it. And it says that in a span of few seconds, it is actually imported close to about 41 odd vouchers. You know what the beauty is after this is done, I can go back to my tally and if I quickly see how many entries are there, just go to my day book, which is the ledger I passed the entry, Canra Bank. So I just go to Canra Bank. I can find all the data being in here. So this is the beauty of this particular software. In a minute, the entire data can come there. 
Okay, so that is something how you use the software again. When do you use the software? I told you whenever you have to automate. I gave an example of a bank statement. You can use this for various other purposes also. Again, you will have to decide when you have to use it, how you have to use it, etc. Uh, the next thing which I thought I'll spend a minute uh, to uh, explain or uh, take you through this particular journey is how do we use the reverse engineering? How do I get data from tally into Excel in an analyzable format? So for that, I'm again going to, you know, go back to tally. I'm just sticking on to tally over here. Uh, what I will do over here, my dear friends, is try to, you know, connect with a different company uh, because that would be a slightly better off because it has more data in it. Uh, let me give you a small useful tip in terms of tally. Um, this portal, which is your calculator, which many of you are aware, Okay, so it has a lot of powerful features. What we normally do is 15 into or into 45, you know, things like this, we do it. But what this can also do is we can write SQL scripts out of this. For instance, I can write a SQL script saying select dollar name, comma, dollar parent, comma, dollar closing balance from ledger. So the moment I write this SQL script, see what I get. Get a simple, very powerful report, which says, what is the name? What is the parent? Name, what is the closing balance? Imagine if you had to generate this or you had to do this using the Excel or, you know, using the features of tally, which is the trial balance of tally. You will not get it in a such a simple and a lucid manner. And just think for a second, if I'm able to export this into Excel, put a pivot over there and link that to my trial balance and balance sheet and other things. How quickly my financial statements can be prepared. Let's go to the next level. Next level of automation is, can I use this in such a way, because I know mostly reasonably the ledger accounts are standardized. Can I use it in such a way where if I refresh an Excel sheet, automatically my balance sheet and PNL account of Excel sheet is ready. Because most of us prepare Excel balance sheet and PNL account, correct? So can I do that? That is something which we all have to focus on. And yes, that is possible. For that, you need to write this SQL script, not here. You have to write it in the Excel sheet. So for that, let's quickly go back to an Excel sheet, which I'm showing over here. And uh, what we now do is, this is a feature of data importing in Excel, not in any add-on software. What I showed you, E2T was an add-on software. The details I'll, I've always also given in the presentation. But now what I'm showing you, my dear friend, is a feature in Excel itself. So I can go click on data. Under data, I have an option called get data. Under get data, you have something called as Microsoft query. Now this is a feature which I'm gonna use now. And this feature, let me tell you, my dear friends, this Microsoft query, whatever you're seeing there, that is typically a feature which Microsoft built, uh, you know, a few versions back, probably uh, much older, and it can import any data from any sort of a database. Okay, it depends on what options you have to choose. Sometimes you have to choose from ODBC, sometimes you have to choose from, you know, from the web from your website also you can import it. Your stock market prices also you can import it, okay? So I just choose from Microsoft query, the moment I choose that, a tiny window like this pops up. Uh, and that window reads something like this. Okay, it says choose a data source. I have an option called tally date ODBC. Uh, under the tally ODBC, you get an option what is visible. And once you say, okay, uh, table such as this opens. There you have an option called as ledger. From ledger, you navigate and say dollar name, click on dollar name. Then you have dollar underscore closing balance. And of course you have dollar E. Type it two to three times, you will be able to figure out dollar parent. Dollar is the prefix which is given for every ledger. The moment I do this, I get this SQL, or you know, I get this structured query which I've written. And this is how it looks like. Just click on next. Don't bother about anything else. Save the query if I want. I can just click on finish. The moment I click finish, I 
gives me a report like this, which says, where is it that you want the data to be pushed in? I choose, hey, you know what? Go ahead and push it in A1. So the moment I choose A1, see what happens. The entire data at one shot is come into the system at one shot. And the beauty is if I pass any entry in tally, I just have to right click this and refresh it, it gets refreshed. So that's how powerful this particular feature which is inbuilt into tally, okay? Uh, so I can build the report and from here I can use pivots and various things and you know, I can get back, I can do wonders over there. So on that note, I'll quickly jump the gun and move to the next thing. So screenshots I've mentioned, this is a screenshot which will appear for those who are not able to see it very clearly. This presentation would also be given to you. And a copy of this uh, video I think is being uploaded on YouTube or has already been live on YouTube. So those who are not able to catch me, you can probably rewind it a little later and have a look at it. Next is a very powerful, interesting thing, Zoho Books, a cloud-based accounting software. Considering the various challenges which you are facing now, I think cloud-based accounting software, it is time that we actually adopt. And therefore, it is necessary for all of us, my dear friends, to actually go to the cloud and start using them. And the reason why I'm spending a little extra time, uh, you know, or probably emphasizing this company is there are no doubt other tools which are available, but they have, uh, I mean, this is again an Indian company for your reference. They are not a foreign company, so their servers are pretty much in India a host of features and they have powerful features of integration. They can integrate with multiple other features. And what is integration? Go to one place, pull up a report and push it over here or from another place, pull up a report and push it over here. All those integrations are possible through Zoho Books. Okay, so what is possible over Zoho Books is something which I thought I'll quickly take you through in a minute so that uh, you get a visibility of uh, what we are looking into. Uh, uh, some questions are coming up. I will take that in the, a little later, my dear friend. So if you could just hang on for some time. Uh, for those of you ODBC, if it is not coming, what you have to do is uh, you have to open tally in administrator mode. So right click on tally and say open as administrator, it works. So let me quickly move to So here now what I'm going to take you through is a cloud-based accounting software. Again, few of you are already been using it. Few of them are probably new to this. I'll tell you one very important feature and one advantage of using a cloud-based accounting software. Sitting from your home, you can do the accounting. Many of us are actually saying that, sir, I'm not able to do the office work, automation, et cetera, et cetera. My dear friends, I'll tell you one simple accounting tip, or a simple hack. Download one of these softwares or, you know, not even download, you just have to open an account. The moment you open an account, the link will go to your client. He just have to activate. He asks your client to enter the bank account details. Automatically, the software will go pull the bank account details from the bank. And it will come in a format which is already ready. All that you have to do is the debit or the credit, like, which is the alternate like for the bank account, you have to pass it. If you find this is difficult, or you know, the client says, no, sir, I'm not able to synchronize. My bank does not have a tie up, etc." What you can do is click on what is called as import as Excel, which I'll show you. You can import that and you can actually do a live, you know, accounting and save that and give your colleague or your employee or article staff access to this, where he can do the categorization. Now you must be thinking, sir, uh, don't you think uh, he will require laptop and all those things. The beauty of this is it is also available on a mobile phone. So from mobile phone, you have uploaded over the portal from mobile phone. He can completely do the, all the accounting, which is necessary. So see the amount of time you can save. What are the various powerful things you can do, correct? So, you know, various dashboards are there available over here. It has end-to-end -end accounting and beauty is it has GST compliance. So you, by click of a button, you enter the GST credentials, automatically the return gets uploaded into the GST website. It has also some features like auto 2A matching, which is what I, you can see in the portal. I know it has a host of these things. It has receivable management, a whole lot of things in terms of getting invoices, asking the client how you can do it. You can integrate with payment gateway so that, you know, client need not add your bank account. Automatically, it'll go to payment gateway and from there it'll come. Then you have tables management. 
tables management to decide how much you have to pay when you have to pay etc inventory a very powerful thing basic inventory you can take or you know if you want advanced inventory try to subscribe to the inventory module my personal favorite is banking you know what this banking can do is they have a few tie ups with a few bank accounts through which through the zoho app itself you can make the payment within the bank or you know from the bank account look at the powerful feature you not you need not even visit the bank account from your zoho books itself you can do that so that's a powerful feature then you have time sheet which you can maintain for various tasks this is not your office time sheet this is pub your client's time sheet you know whatever is that if it is a service oriented company he can do that again uh, you know various contacts building and contacts manager you can do and you know reports features also are available reports are pretty handy including reports of schedule 3 schedule 6 whatever you can call it so let's quickly look into how this looks like once you log in now this is just a trial uh, view so the moment you log in you have the dashboard you have the summary of course uh, this is just a trial view to just to give a perspective you have the banking you can integrate the bank you will find it over here you can either add a bank or an import a statement you know they have features of apply for a loan as well which is there now uh, you have uh, time tracking interesting feature on eway bills gst filing is there gst 3b gst r1 gst r2 whatever is your purchase related you can also give your accountant the access manual journal entries bulk update currency adjustment and a host of things which are possible one of the thing which they also have is something called zoho finance now this has multiple softwares which can integrate at one shot for instance whatever we are seeing here you know it has something called finance plus which talks about reports subscription management invoicing ordering warehousing sales order payment expense reporting payroll all of these at one integrated place so you can see a host of these uh, which is there in one solution and all of this at a subsidized or you know at a price which is worthwhile and everything is on the cloud and the number of users also i think they have given unlimited users or some sort of a uh, you know it's not so very restricted in terms of the users so i think if i go somewhere down beneath they have given the pricing look at this you have to pay about 6000 rupees per organization per month and includes 10 users for fairly larger setup this makes a lot of sense but this is only for your zoho finance i'm not talking about zoho books if i want only zoho books the price the pricing is much more cheaper i think uh, in terms of pricing they are uh, probably one of the lowest in the market you can probably go visit them uh, alternatives are also available which are uh, you know quick uh, books zero books and you know various things you can definitely go give it a try okay so on that note let us come back to where we were discussing and that's the powerpoint presentation i have another uh, uh, 15 to 20 odd minutes i'll try to you know quickly finish this and probably take a few questions so this zoho finance which i told you what are capable of doing uh the next one last thing which i thought i'll spend a few minutes is on how you can use data analytics for audit because that's the era which we are dealing with we need to start using data analytics and uh, it is not very complicated at all to use it so for using this i'm going to teach you two softwares which is going to be helpful one is our of course tally Ali has a feature called as audit and compliance you can go and click on audit and compliance you can find one option called audit analysis under that audit analysis option my dear friend there are host of powerful features which are available in that a few things which i thought i'll probably discuss is you know something called as analytical procedures which is basically ratios you can have something called as periodical payments and receipts or you know repeated transactions for instance if i find avita's rent is is 1 lakh rupees which is repeated 18 times which means that something is not right with this account or i find something which is 12 times or you know 11 times which is appearing that means the last entry which is not appearing and it also has something which is in terms of you know quite powerful in terms of uh, ledgers which where entries have been passed not passed account reconciliation highest and lowest value transactions stale checks external confirmation a host of these things are there my personal favorite is this function called as rsf relative size factor what relative size factor does is it expresses it's actually a, a good tool for doing a audit what it does is at one shot my dear friend it will help and give you a overview or a perspective 
on what exactly is the ratio of the first highest transaction versus the second highest transaction. I repeat, the first highest transaction versus the second highest transaction. And it will give you a ratio of that in such a way, you will get to know whether it is actually legitimate or is it something suspicious. For instance, if I take on electricity charges, and the moment I say, you know, electricity charges RSF, look at this. The highest is 75,000 and the second highest is 5,600, which you find it over here. So what could be a possible reason? Maybe, you know, 7,500 has entered as 75,000 or maybe CapEx versus OpEx issues, correct? So let's quickly see here and the narration says purchase of generator. So which means that things like this can be quickly caught hold of and you need not rely upon your article staff to do this all the time. This is a inbuilt feature within Tally and for using this only thing you need to know is if you go to your company info, which is Alter, you need to ensure that there is a security control, yes. Okay, so if this is there, you can definitely go ahead and do it. Next thing which I thought I'll take you through is one other powerful software, which is a data analytics software. I'll spend a minute or two to explain this. And that is called as GAP. Okay, so let me quickly share a different screen now. And this is a feature or a software which you'll find it over here, which is appearing over here, eCAT. And eCAT is basically used, it's a data analytics software, which is an add-on to Excel, uh, which is a separate software uh, in addition to Excel. This is third-party software which I've subscribed to. Uh, so here what the software does, my dear friends, is that it can summarize or it can give you a report or a perspective in different way. For instance, I have sales. One of the things when we start doing an audit is we want to go through what the, what the file is and get a perspective of what am I dealing with. So for this, what I can do is if I have to get some sort of a view or a perspective of what the data is, I can definitely go through this in Excel lines and lines, or I can use pivot summary, etc. But at one shot, if I want to do certain things that is possible through this, for example, if I can quickly go down until the end, I see that, you know, there are 6,666 records. Okay. Now uh, I can simply, you know, instead of doing all of those, I just go to the software. Of course, this has one more feature. I can right click and just run search for a function and run it. So I want statistics about this software. It's called as column statistics. I just run it. Of course, uh, there's a whole lot of things on data analytics, which we should be aware of, uh, but I just thought I'll give you a intro about it. So a small uh, perspective. So I'm talking about what are the basic things I want to run. So I tell boss me the sum of all the records, uh, you know, for date field, run some basic checks for character fields, I can run basic checks. So let's say I'm just running it for numerical fields. And I, let's say I say, okay. Now what happens is it runs a summary of all of this and at one shot, I'm able to get a review or a perspective of what this data is. Let's see how the results look like. They look something like this. It says how many records are there? Average of positive records, negative records, maximum value. It will also give you date field and character field statistics. I did not choose that to run the analysis now because it may take a few more seconds. Uh, what it also can do, my dear friend, is, uh, you know, Summarizing, which is something which I really like, especially sampling for audit, we need to use sampling uh, to a large extent. So let's say I go click on sampling and I choose by a file. I want to stratify that. I want to stratify these samples. So how do I stratify based on the number or the numeric field? So what I do over here is I click on this. I then go to sales. I now know what my sales are. It is chosen what is the minimum value and the maximum value. So let's see how it looks like. This is the option which is there. So I've chosen field to stratify his sales. Minimum value is 500. Maximum value is about two and a half lakh or two lakh twenty six thousand. I've said that create incremental groups of maybe twenty five thousand. And then what I do is I say autofill. So it creates class intervals and pushes all the sales within this class interval. So the moment I say okay. Now what it does is it's actually calculating in the back end and it says that, you know, what are the possible class intervals? And you can see that class interval appearing over here in the form of a report like this. So what does it say? 
it says that majority of my sales my dear friend is less than 25500 69% and this is constituting close to about 27% of sales now this is useful information for you because you if you kept your materiality as 25000 you are actually failing in this case correct so these are functions which will help you to analyze data much quicker and i also have a function called sampling you can just click on sampling then what it says is it, you know what it says hey why don't you pick up samples from this data so i can choose maybe 10 samples from here maybe two samples from here three samples from here one each from here and once i have done i just say extract pushes everything and generates the sample in a simple report and this is how it looks like So I have my invoice date, I have my sales, I have invoice number, name, user ID. So I can always double click on this, you know, to see whether if I can do some filtering, name, amount, date ways, you know, various types of filter. You know, I can also type which are the types of user ID. I can also say double A, you know, I can type RA, I can figure, figure out who are those people. So these are dynamic options which are available and this is quite handy if you ask me in terms of data analytics software again reasonably affordable this particular software as i told you and of course uh, he explained to you about the, these features as well which is there in tally uh, i'm skipping the case study but this just to give you a perspective this will be there in detail in my presentation this is just to give you a perspective of what are the other options which are there okay few of the other apps which you can consider you will find a list of this and one more interesting app which i recently came across is mda audit tool uh, this is again designed again just for a reference that ECAT TCAT is again designed by chartered accountants so it is more from a CA friendly perspective. MD audit tool is again uh, uh, designed by a CA uh, a firm or rather probably a technology a CA oriented uh, com consulting company. Uh, they have also designed in such a way you can in their software itself there are controls which has been prescribed in terms of uh, highest number lowest number. Uh, number greater than or for tax audit there is some validations which has been pushed all those things are also available there uh, the last section which i'll probably spend before i wrap up for uh, you know because i'm speaking only about tools and technology i don't want to speak about anything else uh, what are the apps which i can use in my practice and which i can better it uh, file is one such example which is basically for expense management you can take a photograph and entry automatically come gets recorded uh, it passes an entry, you just have to approve it. A trial balance or a dump is ready and you just have to you know, import it into Tally. Few other expense tracking apps, you'll find it on the screen. Expensify, Wave, Zoho Expense, Smart Receipts. Uh, there is also what is called as a financial statements with analytics, an app called as Beyond Square. They, you upload the trial balance, you can sort of generate financial statements from this. It also does various analysis. Uh, year on year, month on month, etc. Uh, only challenge over here is as of now, it is not scheduled or it is not very well set up for uh, what is called as your, um, um, if I have to name it your um, uh, schedule three. So subject to that, this is quite handy. Perfios is another powerful software, which is basically integrated software. What it can do is, you know, all your bank statements, credit cards, everything, it can sort of integrate it and put it into one portal. And from that portal, you can decide how to take it, what to take it, what not to take it and things like that. Uh, this is something which I got to know quite recently, you know, probably about three to four months back. Veratech, it is a company which, you know, sort of does search report services and it uses AI to do it. So assuming you cho choose a particular company's name, it uses artificial intelligence, downloads all the search reports, combines them into a project report and gives you in an editable format. And it's pretty easy and interesting, this particular company, what they've done. It's worthwhile to go ahead and explore. Of course, the prices are purely based upon custom quotation. You can definitely go there and explore. Uh, one other company is Audit Confirmation. This is an app which, you know, you take audit confirmation. There are a few local uh, India-based companies also who provide this. Uh, this is basically for your third-party integration or third-party confirmation. It is documented for your SA 500, 505, all those purposes. Google Forms, one more powerful tool. I think we spoke about it. Where you can use Google Forms, quiz, article ship interview, your um, 
uh, what you call uh, your employee training, client survey, data collection for income tax. I'm not sure if you are aware, Google form also has a option to upload the file. Okay, you can also upload the file. So next time when you're doing, asking your client to give a checklist, instead of sending an Excel sheet checklist, why don't you put it in a Google form and he just says yes, 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 and upload it. Or he just gives us a response against it. So GST filing, you can use income tax filing, basic data collection, you can do KYC compliance, you know, for this uh, ROC related work, we use this, uh, where we send to the mail and we ask all the clients to upload it and it will get stored in one particular folder. So it is easy. Otherwise, how do I track it in my email? Correct. So checklist for audit, all these are possible. And I also showed you how you can do a Google form. Uh, you just go to new and click on more, you'll be able to do it. A few other apps, invoicing app by name in a wave. That's one more interesting app. And numbers is one more app for invoicing, tracking the sales, receivable management. Then you have a fancy reports if at all you want to make it. And those are basically available in Microsoft PowerPoint itself. Okay, so it's under the design tab, you'll find these options. And uh, you can also click on Canva. Canva is basically uh, another uh, software where you have various fancy reports which you can do. And Wisme is something which is quite interesting where you can create a lot of fancy stuff. If you're doing a lot of research, if you want to take down notes, this is one handy app. This can synchronize between laptop and mobile phone instantaneously or within a span of few seconds. Uh, of course, uh, the basic version, only one user can use it. If you want a premium version, your entire office can use it. And if you felt that you want to, you know, sort of use a software engineer for your office, and this is one such app, which is basically called Upwork, a whole lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, freelancing uh, portal from website development to high-end software development, you can outsource it. And they're available at a reasonably very affordable price. You can get a, high, a software engineer as low as 10 to $15, which is probably about less than a thousand rupees on an average. Uh, many of us have to keep a track of when my digital signature will expire, when my license or software will expire. Aladdin Pro expiration reminder are a few good examples for that. It will keep a track which day what, and it will also notify you by sending you alerts and to the client. Uh, many of them keep asking me, sir, how do I remember passwords? There is this function called, uh, there's a software called split key or LastPass. They encrypt the password and they save it. That is also definitely a good option which you can consider. And uh, if you want to invest and be a little more futuristic, uh, you can also start doing automation of your various activities. And uh, you can automate any activity which is repetitive, limited human intervention, high volume, time consuming activity. And of course, works which are independent versus interactive. These are the works which you can sort of, you know, automate it. So if it is independent, you can automate. Interactive is less difficult. A few examples of what we can use in our own office uh, where we, you can do it. We have tried to automate uh, basic GST reconciliation. We have tried to automate um, to some extent uh, ROC related work. Fixed asset register is something which we are working on. Uh, you know, we're doing some automation there. You know, and these automations are not very high end. Using Excel itself, you can do it. And that's basically the power of all these solutions. So my suggestion is that, you know, only until you start using it, you will never get to know whether these are worthwhile. So that is something which I would probably request you to go ahead and start doing a trial and error. Uh, let me quickly see if I have something very important to cover because we are coming towards the end of eight. And of course, if you do have any questions, feel free to drop in a message. I will be able to address that. Yes, I have about three to four odd slides. Uh, using chatbots, if you think that chatting robot you want for your website, you can probably have that. Uh, a chatbot is basically you type a message, it will automatically reply saying that, oh, hi, uh, welcome visitor or hi, so-and-so. Can I clarify this? How may I help you? And, you know, basic things like this it gives you. Uh, these are a few of the companies which can help you with that. Flow, Intercom, Suburbo, etc. And this is if you want to invest into the future by being, by using AI-based accounting tools. These are a few examples. Botkeeper, Wik.ai, Smack. These are, again, companies which are, you know, sort of uh, uh, available to give you those remote working tools. Uh, sorry, AI-based tools. And we have AI-based data analytics, which is called MindBridge. Okay, so on that note, I'll probably, uh, you know, uh, uh, call it a day.
and uh, probably uh, just two things you know before i sort of wrap up uh, some very good interesting thing which our ica has come up with and that is called as dcmm digital capability maturity model i'll quickly take you through that particular uh, slide this is called as a digital competency maturity model this helps any chartered accountants firm to measure or benchmark itself against good digital practices that's a very very self help evaluation guide i had the opportunity to co-author this implementation guide on dcmm for our institute where we have divided the entire model into few sections and we have gone into depth and said how do you measure your level of competency in each of the sections which is appearing on the slide so this is a pretty good document for you to benchmark yourself where you are in the digitization journey and i think it's time that we all of us have to digitize our firms because otherwise it is going to be quite a challenging affair on that note my dear friends um, uh, i think i gave you a perspective of what all is necessary and what all can be done i will share a few video links so that you are able to make use of it on that note thank you so much i'll be happy to take questions